Hello students, today we will discuss about the C1 and C2 vertebra, these are known as atlas and axis vertebra. So when you will have the first cervical vertebra, you know that it is also known as atlas. So the first question comes is why it is known as atlas vertebra. So the reason is that God who supported the earth, God who supported the earth on his shoulder is known as atlas and as the first cervical vertebrae supports the skull that's why the first cervical vertebrae is known as atlas clear so this is the question, uh, answer of this question why the first cervical vertebrae known as atlas now there are some very important characteristic features of this vertebrae first is that it is a ring shaped vertebrae then the second important thing is that it is made up of only the arches and they are anterior and posterior arches. Now it is not having any body. As you know that whenever we are having any kind of the vertebrae, every vertebrae is having the body but the cervical vertebrae, first cervical vertebrae is not having the body. There is no spine, the spine is rudimentary. The transverse processes are widest apart as compared to the other cervical vertebrae. So when you will see this alignment of the cervical vertebrae, you can see here that this is the first cervical. Now if you will see the transverse diameter from the end of this transverse process to the end of this transverse process, you can see that if we will draw the line in the same plane you will realize that the diameter is maximum here clear so the distance between this point of the transverse process to this point of transverse process of first cervical vertebrae is maximum apart from that you can see that it is a ring shape structure and it is not having any body which is which has to be here apart from that Posteriorly, there is no spine, it is only having a small posterior tubercle which is rudimentary spine. Now, what are the important facts which you should know whenever you are holding the first cervical vertebrae in exam? So, you should know about the articular facets which are helpful to identify the superior and inferior surface of this cervical vertebrae. So the superior facets are elongated, they are kidney shaped and concave. All these three features are very important whenever we are talking about the identification of superior and inferior surface because the superior facets are going to articulate with the condyles of occipital bone and they are elongated. You can see that they are kidney shaped and concave. It is going to articulate with the occipital condyle to form atlanto occipital joint which is a ellipsoid variety of joint and the inferior articular facets are small and flat. So this is the inferior view of the first cervical vertebrae where you can see the facet is round, circular or flat but the superior one is elongated. Clear? So this inferior facet is going to articulate with the superior facet of second cervical vertebrae or axis. Now <clears throat> when you will see the lateral mass of the first cervical vertebrae, lateral mass means this area is known as lateral mass of cervical vertebrae. Now the lateral mass of has two articular process or the facets and these two articular facets are also having a projection laterally is known as transverse process. So you will have the superior facet, you will have the inferior facet and you have transverse process. The anterior arch is smaller than the posterior arch and connects the two lateral masses. So both these lateral masses are connected here anteriorly by this small process is known as anterior arch. The anterior tubercle is present on the anterior aspect in the midline. Now when you will see the midline, you will have a small projection on the anterior side and this is known as anterior tubercle of the first cervical vertebrae. 
there is an oval facet is present on the posterior surface of the anterior arch now this is the question so many times you have in the spotting and that facet is going to make a joint with the dense of the axis vertebrae and it is known as median atlanto axial joint which is an example of pivot variety so here if you will see in this part you have a articular area and this is the inner side of anterior arch where you can see that this dense is there and this dense is going to form the median atlanto axial joint now what about the posterior arch this is the posterior arch which is longer as compared to the anterior arch of first cervical vertebrae now in this diagram you can see that this shadow is showing the placement of your first cervical vertebrae which is known as atlas and inside that you are able to see the projection of the dense and that dense is nothing but it is a upward continuation of the body of second cervical vertebrae and it actually represent the detached body of first cervical vertebrae so here you can see that this joint which is formed by the inner aspect of the first cervical vertebrae arch and the dense is known as median atlanto axial joint now the medial surface of the lateral masses has a tubercle and this tubercle provide attachment to the transverse ligament now here you can see that these are the tubercles and on this tubercle you are having a ligament and this ligament provides support to the dens and these tubercle are on the medial side of lateral mass the transverse process is long and the strong now this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind that the transverse process of first cervical vertebras are longest in all cervical group now what are the attachments on the first cervical vertebrae so first is anterior longitudinal ligament now anterior longitudinal ligament is a constant finding which is present on the ventral aspect of the vertebral column and here in this diagram you can see that from this upper margin of the arch of first cervical vertebra you are having a band now this band is present on the ventral surface and it is a very important support of the vertebral column and this is known as anterior longitudinal ligament and it attaches in the upper part is attached on the anterior tubercle of c1 the anterior atlanto occipital membrane now this anterior atlanto occipital membrane attached on the upper border of the anterior arch of the uh, cervical vertebra and upward it will reach to the margin of the foramen magnum and the anterior atlanto occipital membrane is a continuation of anterior longitudinal ligament above first cervical vertebra what is the meaning of this that here you can see this is the upper end of your anterior longitudinal ligament now the upward continuation of this anterior longitudinal ligament above the cervical vertebra is known as membrane and this membrane reach up to the anterior margin of the foramen magnum that will come here so this area is known as anterior atlanto occipital membrane and anterior atlanto occipital membrane is a continuation or upward prolongation of anterior longitudinal ligament now then you will have the posterior atlanto occipital membrane now posterior atlanto occipital membrane attached on the superior border of posterior arch clear so there is anterior membrane there is a posterior membrane anterior membrane is here which you can see the cut margin the posterior membrane is here which is visible here in a green color area now this is the posterior atlanto occipital membrane 
So posterior atlanto occipital membrane and anterior atlanto occipital membrane both are present along the superior border of anterior arch and superior border of posterior arch of first cervical vertebrae. Now this is the upward continuation of ligamentum flava. Now what is ligamentum flava? Flava means yellow color. It is a yellow color ligament and this yellow color ligament present between the laminas of adjacent vertebrae. Now here in this diagram you can see that this is the lamina of your second cervical vertebrae and this is the lower border of posterior arch of first cervical vertebrae. In between you have this yellow color area is known as ligamentum flava. In the same way here also you can see this yellow color area. So ligamentum flava is nothing but it interconnect the adjacent vertebras and it present between the lamina. But above the first cervical vertebrae it is not known as ligamentum flava, it is known as posterior atlanto occipital membrane. Clear? So in this diagram you are able to understand there are two things which you have to keep in mind. What is anterior atlanto occipital membrane? It is a continuation of anterior longitudinal ligament and what is posterior membrane? It is a upward continuation or represent the ligamentum flava. Clear? Now, the next attachment is known as ligamentum nuchae. Now, this ligamentum nuchae attached in a midline. So, it is a midline structure. It is a midline structure and it connects or attached on the posterior tubercle of atlas vertebrae. Now, in this diagram, if you will see what you are able to understand that this is the first cervical vertebrae you are seeing from the posterior side. So here should be the posterior tubercle. Now along the all posterior spines which are the feature of all the cervical vertebras except the first one where you have the tubercle rather than the spine. You will realize that a bundle of collagen fibers are arranged and these are known as ligamentum nuchae. Clear? So ligamentum nuchae, if you will see the profile view or the lateral side, it is a plate and this plate is present in the midline and it connects the spines of adjacent vertebras and here we are not having the spine, we are having the posterior tubercle of cervical vertebrae in for case of atlas. So what is ligamentum nuchae? It is a midline structure. Now this is most commonly asked question in your exams irrespective it can be the theory it can be your spotting. Now the question is what are the relations of the superior surface of posterior arch. Now when you will see this vertebrae you have the marking in this area. Now this is the superior surface why it is superior surface the first thing is you have to identify that these are the elongated superior articular facets. So, but obviously this will become superior surface of your posterior arch. Now behind the superior uh, articular facet on the superior surface there is a groove. Now the question comes is why the groove is present or which structure are related in these grooves on both the side. So there are two structures which are present. One is known as third part of vertebral artery. What is the first structure? Third part of vertebral artery and second structure is first cervical nerve. First cervical nerve which is a spinal nerve and it is also known as suboccipital nerve. So they are present in a shallow groove on the superior surface of the posterior arch just behind the lateral mass or behind the superior articular facet. So there are two questions in this slide. The first question is what is the relation of structures on the superior surface of posterior arch? Answer is third part of vertebral artery and first cervical nerve. The second question is that the first cervical nerve exit in front of the lateral mass or behind the lateral mass? Answer is 
behind the lateral mass. Why I am saying this that we will see in the coming slide. So in this diagram if you will see this diagram is very important to clear this concept. Now here you can see that these are the lateral mass clear or superior articular facet. Now behind the superior articular facet in this diagram you can see there is a course of artery. Now this is your third part of vertebral artery. Now you know that vertebral artery ascend into the neck through the foramen transversarium. Now once it will reach to the uppermost foramen that is the C1 foramen then it has to enter into the foramen magnum and then it will enter into the cranial cavity. Now there are two ways. The artery can go like this or like this but which is the right answer artery will go posteriorly then it passes in a groove which is on the posterior side of the lateral mass or superior facet and then it enters into the foramen magnum. So this diagram is very important and you should keep this in mind that artery after reaching up to the C1 foramen it will take a posterior turn and then medial turn. Clear? The second important thing which you are able to see in this diagram is the nerve. Now if you will see the nerve, you can see that nerve is also present here along with the artery and it will come out from this vertebral column by passing through the space behind the superior articular facet. Clear? Now this diagram is showing the whole course of the vertebral artery. So for the better understanding you can see that this is the C1, this is C2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and this is the 7. Now you know that vertebral artery is present only in the upper 6 uh, foramens of cervical vertebrae, not in the C7. So you can see that this foramen of C7 is not having the vertebral artery. So this is the first question. Now the second question is that we divide this vertebral artery in the four parts. But here you can see this is the first part before entering and from the origin. Now this is the second part of the artery which is passing through the foramens of uh, cervical vertebrae. And this is the third part. Now see, now this is the question of your exam that here you, what you are able to see as soon as the artery will reach here it, are, it is taking posterior turn. That's why when you will see the posterior side, you are able to see this loop of the artery here. Clear? So this loop of the artery is present behind the superior articular facet of first cervical vertebrae and it is on the superior surface of this posterior arch. Clear? Now in this diagram, you can see the entry. Now here again, this is the posterior loop of the artery behind the superior articular facets and then the artery is ascending and then ultimately it will enters inside the foramen magnum in the cranial cavity. Clear? Now here we will find the answer of this question which is very important question for your exam that first and second cervical spinal nerves they emerges behind the intervertebral joints. It emerges behind the joints, not in front of the joint. Now see, you have to first keep this thing in mind that there are presence of the notches and these notches are known as vertebral notch and notch are always present on upper and lower part of the pedicle in front of the articular processes. What do you mean? Now here suppose this is your articular process. This is your articular process. Now above, now in front of the process you are having the pedicles. And on the pedicle you are having the uh, notch. That is the notch. And these notch are converted into the foramen by the adjacent vertebra when you have the articulation. So this notch will convert into the foramen. But my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind. You have to mark this area that 
notches are always in front of the joint. Now, this is the joint, this is the joint, this is the joint, this is the joint. So, you will realize that the nerves always come out in front of the superior articular facets or inferior articular facet. But this is the exception. Here, this is your articular facet. This is the nerve which is coming out from the posterior side. Clear? In the same way, this is the facet and the nerve is coming out from the posterior side. But from here, the nerve is coming out in front of the facet. So, this is the question of your exam that which spinal nerves exit the vertebral column behind the articular facet. Answer is first and second cervical nerves, those will emerge behind the articular facet. Now, this is the articular facet and here you can see the posterior part is having the groove for the third part of vertebral artery and along with that you are able to appreciate the nerve and this nerve is visible very well here and this is your first cervical nerve which is here. In the same way, here also you can see that this is the second cervical nerve. So, whenever you are having this image, you have to keep in mind that this is your spinal cord and from the spinal cord, once the first cervical nerve will emerge, it will take a course behind the superior articular facet, not in front. But after the second cervical nerve, all the nerve emerges from the front of the articular facets. Clear? So, my purpose is to explain why you have this arrangement. So, this is only because of anterior placement of the lateral mass in case of first and second cervical vertebra. Now, we will see some muscles which are attached on the anterior aspect of first cervical vertebrae. So, here <coughs> you are having a constant muscle which is present here. Now, this muscle is present on the anterior aspect of the arch just side of this anterior tubercle here and this muscle is known as longus coli. So, you can see this is the longus coli which is an important midline muscle present on the anterior aspect of your vertebral column. Now, apart from this longus coli, you are having two more muscles which are present on the anterior side and these muscles are here. Now, this is known as rectus capitis lateralis and you are having the rectus capitis anterior. So, these are the two muscles because when you will have the suboccipital triangle, posteriorly you have rectus capitis, posterior, oblique, major and minor. But on the anterior aspect, you have rectus capitis lateralis, rectus capitis anterior and this I told you is longus coli. Clear? So, these are the three muscles which are attached on the anterior aspect of this arch of your first cervical vertebrae. Now, this is the posterior attachment of the muscles. Now, on the posterior side, this is the outline of your first cervical vertebrae. Here you can see that the muscles those are attaching here are forming the boundary of suboccipital triangle. And here this is the first muscle and this muscle is known as rectus capitis posterior minor. Then you will have one more muscle, but these are not attaching to the cervical first vertebra. They are going on the second. So, whenever you are having the muscles attachment of the first cervical vertebra, posteriorly there is a single muscle is known as rectus capitis posterior minor, while anteriorly you have the longus coli, rectus capitis anterior and rectus capitis lateralis. Now, these, this diagram is more clear where you can see the attachment of this single muscle, this is rectus capitis posterior minor, clear? Major means larger than the minor. So, major will go on the second cervical vertebrae. Now, we will move to the second cervical vertebrae which is also known as axis. Why it is known as axis? Because it's pro it provides axis for the rotation of your head. So, it is the strongest vertebrae along the all cervical group. It has an odontoid process. Now, the odontoid process is also known as dance, which is 
a strong tooth like projection from the body of axis. Now in this diagram you can see this is the projection and this projection is the dance and this dance actually represent the body of first cervical vertebrae which detached from the first one and joined here with the second vertebrae. Now what are the attachment of the body and odontoid process? Now the dance give attachment to the apical ligament. So this is the first question. Now apical ligament arises from the tip of this dance and it will go upward and attached into the clivus of your occipital bone. Now this apical ligament cut end is visible here. On each side of the apex the sloping surfaces. Now sloping surfaces are where? Now the sloping surfaces are present here. Now these sloping surfaces of the dance will give attachment to the two lateral bands and these bands are known as LR ligament. So here you can see these are the LR ligaments which are present on the lateral side of your dance and these are weak bands. They are weak ligaments. Now in this diagram you have one more important ligament and that is known as transverse ligament of dance. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the transverse ligament and this ligament holds the dance in its own position and it make a groove on the posterior side here. And this groove is the question for your exam that what structure lies in this groove of the dance. Answer is transverse ligament. So the groove is present like this, this transverse ligament present like this and it also having a articular area for the posterior side of your dance. Clear? So this ligament supports the median atlanto axial joint. Now what are the attachment on the body? So first we will see the attachment on the posterior surface of the body. Now this is the posterior surface of the body. Clear? Now anterior surface of the body will face ventrally and this is the posterior surface of the body which is facing towards the vertebral canal. Now on this posterior surface there are three important structures present from above downward. Now this uppermost structure is known as lower limb of cruciform ligament. Now what do you mean by cruciform? Here you are having a cross shaped ligament like this. Clear? Now this horizontal bar is formed by the transverse ligament which we have already seen and here you are having the two band one is the inferior band of the cruciform ligament and this is the superior band of cruciform ligament. So this band attached here on the posterior side and this is known as lower limb of the cruciform ligament. Apart from that you are having the two more ligament one is known as membrana tectoria and another is posterior ligament of your vertebral column. Now as you have the anterior longitudinal ligament in the same way you have posterior longitudinal ligament. So the body of vertebras are strongly supported by anterior and posterior longitudinal ligament. So the posterior longitudinal ligament is present in the anterior wall of the vertebral canal and its upper end and here. Now this is the upper end of the posterior longitudinal ligament. So the lowermost structure is posterior longitudinal ligament. Now this posterior longitudinal ligament then extends upward and this extension is known as membrana tectoria. So this membrana tectoria comes here. So membrana tectoria is nothing but it is a upward prolongation of posterior longitudinal ligament. Clear? So here in this diagram I told you about the anterior longitudinal ligament. Now this anterior longitudinal ligament present along the anterior surface of all the vertebra in the same way on the posterior side of the body in vertebral canal you have posterior longitudinal ligament. A part continuation of anterior longitudinal ligament is here which is known as anterior atlanto occipital membrane. But the upward continuation of posterior longitudinal ligament is known as membrana tectoria and membrana tectoria starts from second cervical vertebral body. Now 
what is the another attachment on the anterior surface i already told you the anterior longitudinal ligament and sanket is longus coli muscle which we have already seen in the diagram now here also you can see that this is the longus coli muscle and this longus coli muscle is present here on the anterior aspect of all the vertebral bodies which are visible in this diagram now the spine of second cervical vertebrae also give attachment to the ligamentum nuque and lamina also give attachment to the ligamentum flava so as a rule i already told you that this is your spine of second vertebrae clear and we have seen a plate and this plate of connective tissue is connecting the adjacent spine which is known as ligamentum nuque and in between the adjacent lamina in this area you are having a yellow color part and this is known as ligamentum flavum clear but in the first space it is not known as ligamentum flavum which i already told you it is known as posterior atlanto occipital membrane now we have some question based on this diagram so if you have this in the exam identify so you know that there is no body and there is a presence of the foramen in the transverse process now presence of the foramen in transverse process is a characteristic feature of cervical vertebrae so no doubt it is a cervical vertebrae and it is a first one why because it is a ring shape now the question comes is which is superior and inferior surface for that you have to look for the facet it is a oval facet which is elongated it is a round facet so this elongated surface is superior surface this will become inferior surface now the question comes is name the structure present here on the posterior side answer is third part of vertebral artery and first nerve cervical now now this is the again anterior view and posterior view of your cervical vertebrae now the question comes is what is this now this is the articular surface on the inner side of your anterior arch for the dense clear and sometimes you have this question what is this this is the posterior tubercle and it give attachment to the ligamentum nuque now again this question comes now this is the loop of your third part of vertebral artery and this loop you can see present behind the superior articular facet of first cervical vertebrae now in this diagram the question is identify this band now what is this band i already told you that this is nothing but it is a upward continuation of posterior longitudinal ligament which is known as membrana tectoria which starts from the posterior surface of the body clear it is not coming from the dense it is coming from the posterior surface of the body of second cervical vertebrae now again this is the question identify this vertebrae it is very simple it is second cervical vertebrae and it is showing the classical dance clear so at the end of this class we are able to understand how to differentiate the first and second cervical vertebrae from the other they are atypical and the most important thing is that what are the important structures present on the posterior side of the superior surface of first cervical vertebrae so this is all for today's class Thank you.